Hello, welcome to the video on referencing properly. I need to preface this by indicating that the University of Limerick has a very good guide available on its website in the library and the guide is cited right. You can download a copy of that guide yourself and have it on your computer system. There's three elements uh, that are essential to referencing. The first is citing, actually knowing that you have to reference sources you quote within your document, and then providing for a reader a list of the sources that have been cited within the text, and this is known as your reference list. Others actually go beyond this by including a bibliography, and a bibliography is a list of all references consulted in preparing the document, whether cited or not. So at a minimum, you need to have a reference list. So what are the elements of citing? Well, in the University of Limerick, we use the Harvard method of citing. And this method includes having the author's name, the year of publication, and where relevant, the page number. One may question, well, what might be relevant for using a page number? And that is when you're using a direct quotation or direct content from an author. So what are the rules for citing? The rules are that you use a surname only. For where there are one or two authors, you use a surname and where you have the two authors, you link it by the word and. Not the ampersand, but the actual and word. Where there's three or more authors, you use the first author's surname and then et al. In Cite at Right on page 13 and 14, you will see samples of citing authors in text on those pages. For the year, you have to give the full four digits for the year. And for the pages, you abbreviate the word pages to P, full stop, and PP, full stop, for page range. And you use a hyphen between the page range numbers. So just further on from that, citing the page numbers, here are some examples. So the first example is a quote from a single page. So we have Christer, the year 2003, comma, page is one page, so that's P.31. The multiple pages is author, surname, Christer, 2003 is a year, comma, PP.31-32, that is the page range. So within the in-text citation, if you are saying, for example, an author said on a particular page and you are quoting direct from them, you can say, Christer said in 2003, open brackets, P.31, close brackets, and then whatever Christer says. But actually, let's say, for example, there is no page numbers of which it could happen. Here, then, you could count the number of paragraphs and refer, if possible, to the paragraph number and or section heading. For example, just where there are paragraphs, you can say Christer 2003, comma, para, which is the abbreviation for the word paragraph, dot 11. So that's the 11th paragraph in Christer's publication in 2003. Or if you want to be more specific and you know there is a section heading, you have author's surname, Christer, the uh, year of publication, 2003, comma, it's in the introduction, so introduction, comma, and it's the second paragraph of the introduction, so para dot two. So what about quoting and paraphrasing? And this is where you should, again, go back to uh, the UL Library webpage as they give you some um, examples and tutorials on how to actually quote and paraphrase. What does quoting mean? To quote is to directly use another's words and to acknowledge the source. For example, the rise in obesity grew from a boundary-free culture of American food consumption. 
open brackets Christer 2003, P.31. So where is the quote? The quote is directly here in the inverted commas. Boundary free culture of American food consumption has been taken directly from Christer. To paraphrase is to express the author's work in your own words and to acknowledge the source. So, in your own words, you have written increasing obesity levels in the United States grew from a food consumption culture that was boundary free. So here we just have in open brackets, Christer 2003. To summarize is to describe broadly the findings of a study without directly quoting from it. And again, it is in your own words. So, in a popular study, Christer 2003 argues that our culture is now without boundaries. To plagiarise is to present another's work as your own and not acknowledge the source. For example, in writing in the United States, states the rise in obesity grew from a boundary-free culture of American food consumption. This is a direct plagiarized sentence from Christer 2003, page 31, but here the author has not actually acknowledged the work of Christer. And that then would actually be recognized as plagiarism. So what about short and long quotations? There are rules. And the easy rule is that a short quotation is 20 words or less. And you put them in inverted commas within the text, such as society has developed a boundary free culture, open brackets, Christopher 2003, page 31, which has affected our food consumption. So the quotation is boundary free culture in inverted commas. A long quotation should be indented in a separate paragraph in a smaller font. And then you cite the author and date in the same font and in brackets at the right margin of the page under the quotation. So here is a direct quotation, which is in a smaller text, indented, and the uh, reference, actually the reference here, should be more over to the right hand side of the page. So the long quotation is anything over 20 words that are, you are taking directly without paraphrasing and you are presenting it in a smaller font, indented, and then the um, author's details underneath the quotation. So I briefly explained the difference between a reference list and a bibliography. They are actually sometimes used interchangeably. I have to put my hands up. I actually have used them interchangeably, but actually I was not really aware of the differences. So now I am. So you have to be aware there are the difference. There are differences between the two. The reference list is a detailed list of all references cited within the text of a paper. The reference list must include comprehensive biographical information. I'll explain what that information is later when we're presenting um, either the reference list or the bibliography. So a bibliography is also a detailed list of references. So a bibliography includes a reference list, but also those references that have not been cited within the text, but have been used as maybe um, influential pieces of paper that may have given you guidance to other papers or other theories. So what are the elements of a reference list? So at a minimum, you have a reference list. It is located at the end of a paper, article or thesis. Every reference must have enough information for the reader to find that source again. Now, under the Harvard referencing style, there are actually um, structures that you need to take on board for when you are referencing either a book a journal, a web page, email communication, etc. All of that is outlined in Size It Right. So a book reference must have an author, a year, title, and place of publication, publisher, and editor. And 
if it's not the first edition, you need to identify the name of the edition. Is it the third edition? Is it the fifth edition? What's also important here to know is that a book reference, the title of the book is actually in italics and it is uh, letter capitalized. So each word of the title, uh, the, the first letter of each word is actually capitalized. A journal reference has a place of, never has place of publication or publisher, but must include the journal volume. So it could be volume three issue, which is normally in brackets after the volume number and then page numbers. So it could be a single page, so P dot, or it could be page range, so PP dot 41 hyphen 72. The most common mistake in the reference list is leaving out an essential element, such as the year, or actually the title of the book or title of journal article, or the publisher. The second most common mistake in the reference list is inconsistency in punctuation and capitals. So I have to say, you do have to follow exactly the conventions laid out in the Harvard style of referencing, which is actually replicated in Cite It Right. So the rules for displaying references in the reference list or the bibliography, firstly, the references should be in alphabetical order by author surname. References should not be numbered, no numbers at all within the reference list. The layout, punctuation and capitalization of all references must be consistent. For example, and I've mentioned this briefly already, capitalize article and chapter titles in sentence style, capitalize all personal names and places, capitalize book and journal title, and put book and journal title in italics. So this is the next slide has been taken directly from Cite It Right, and it has also then in Cite It Right been adapted from Piers and Shields 2004, page two. So it's elements to include in a reference. So on the X axis, you have author, year, title of publication or title of article, the title of publication, volume and issue, place of publication, publisher, edition, page number, web address and date accessed. So if we have, let's say, for example, a journal article, you have to include the following, the author, the year, the title of article, the title of publication, the volume and issue, and then the page number. If a journal article is on the web, we need to have the author, the year, title of article or publication, title of publication, the volume and issue, the web address, and then the date accessed. So again, when you are unsure about what to include in the reference, please revert back to this slide. So where to find elements of a reference? So for a book, you look on the cover, the spine, and the reverse of the title page. And there you will be able to find details about the publisher, where it was published, and what edition. For the article, look on the cover and table of contents of the journal issue. For the website, look on the top and bottom of the page, the logos and the web address. So I've given a couple of samples here of um, some referencing that you may have to do. Some of the common methods of referencing within a thesis, within a report, or within a strategic commercialization plan. More examples are given in Cite It Right. So for a journal article, you have the author's name, initial, year of publication, title of article, this is in uh, inverted commas, then the title of the journal, which is in italics, the volume. Some people use the word VOL full stop and then the number. That's an okay convention, but it's not actually necessary. You can just put in the volume number, then the issue number, 
or date month of publication in the absence of volume and issue, comma, page numbers, and full stop. So, what does it look like? The um, example below is how you would reference a journal article where there are a number of authors involved. As you can see, you have Greenfell is the lead author, then Greenfell's initials of MC, then you have the next author, Ellery W. N. W. Comma, etc., until you get to the last author, and the last author is joined up with the word and, van der Valk, and then comma, and then their initials of A. Dot G. Dot, and then you have open brackets of the year of publication, close brackets. The title of the article is in inverted commas and lowercase uh, wording. So there is in capital T and then the rest is language of intervention, colon, a review of concepts and terminology in wetland ecosystem repair. Closed inverted commas, a comma, and then the name of the journal is Water SA. That is in italics. The volume number is number 33, open brackets is 1, close brackets, that means the issue is the first issue in the 33rd volume, comma, 43 to 50. Now here there is not the pp.43 to 50, it's okay to also include pp.43 to 50, but if you want to follow the convention as per se, you don't put it in there. So an example of a book. We have, again, similar uh, convention of the primary author's uh, surname, then their initials by a comma, then the next author, um, comma, their um, initial, full stop, and Ulrich, comma, E dot, year of publication. And then we have um, the title of the book, The Dead Sea Scrolls Bible. As you can see, the um, first letter in each word is capitalized. And then the subtitles, subtitle is in lowercase. However, Bible is in a capital um, for, uh, capitalization. Comma, San Francisco, colon, Harper. So the place of publication is San Francisco and Harper is a publisher. Then we have an example of a blog or a web log. And again, you can see author's surname, comma, D, full stop. That's the initial, the year of publication, 2007. The subject of the message is, could World of Warcraft fight disease? That is in inverted commas. Um, also, the first word is uh, capitalized, science-based science blog. That is the name of the blog, and that is in italics and also capitalized um, first word. In uh, brackets is the word online, comma. The date of posting is the 24th of August, comma. Available, and this is where you copy the whole HTTP web address. And then open brackets when you actually accessed the blog. And you type the word accessed 28 August 2007. Then a web page. How do we reference a web page? We have the owner of the web page, 2007, the title of the web page, for example, EU funding, again in italics, sorry, pardon me, in inverted commas. And the name of the web page is overview. Online comma, available, full HTTP address, and when it was accessed, again, in brackets. Finally, within referencing, now, before actually I, I finish off this section, please again, go back to Cite It Right, look for more examples of different referencing methods for, let's say, um, online communication, let's say for a, um, a, a picture or an image, um, a TV, film, etc., how to actually reference those. There's more content contained within Cite It Right. Also, review the web page uh, the, for the library where there's tutorials on how to reference properly.
Finally, there is software available and EndNote um, is one of the software. The other is RefWorks and both are actually available uh, to download on any faculty or postgraduate computer on campus. Um, EndNote, once you actually insert the references in EndNote, they are available for use in other publications that you might be putting together. Um, RefWorks is useful for undergraduates and taught postgraduates. You can again um, register online and um, you can check the Glucksman's Library's website at www.ie forward slash squiggle never know the name of that, library forward slash referencing for information on both RefWorks and EndNote training. Just a, a, a word of uh, caution, you know, referencing, it's quite difficult to do. It's not something that you can do um, very quickly. You need to sit down and methodically go through, well, is this a journal article? Yes, it is. Did we get it um, in paper format or in PDF or did we actually get it online? There's different conventions for presenting those types of references. You will have to know where the commas, the full stops go, what is italicized, what's an inverted commas. Um, so make sure that you always have a copy of Cited Right open when you are actually referencing. I'm 20 years uh, publishing, I still have to have Cited Right open to know where does that comma, where does that full stop go. So I hope this has helped you to understand referencing, how to reference properly, and I look forward to reading your work that is properly referenced. Thank you. Bye-bye.